Hi, I'm Indiana Jones and welcome to my channel Crafting with Indiana Jones because who else would you be crafting with here? If you're new here, please drop me a little note down below so I get to know you and meet some more crafty friends. Today is a very special day because I will be crafting alongside a very sweet creative friend of mine and we'll be sharing each other's channels today. But for now, let's get started on some shabby chic cottage core spring decor ideas. Let's go! For my first decorating idea, I'm going to redo this little birdhouse. This was actually given to me by my mom who since has passed away. And I, she had given it to me right after spring and I had so many plans for it. So I dedicate this first craft to her um, in memory of my sweet mother, Aurora. Anyway, here we're gonna get started just fixing this thing up. It was a wreck, had a huge hole in the back of it. So I just plugged it up with some air dry clay and it worked just fine sanded it down and it was ready to paint. And here I am using some 50 cents mist tint paint from Home Depot. That's where I get a lot of my big quantities of paint. And if it needs to be chalk paint, just add a little bit of baking soda. Now I'm going to use some white chalk paint or some white acrylic paint and just drag it through like a dry brush technique just to make it look a little more countryfied or cottage core. Now here's a golden frame that actually was white when I first got it from Dollar Tree and then I just dry brushed it gold. I'm going to use that as trim for my birdhouse. As you can see, I cut the frame down just to fit the roof. And then I thought, well, if the roof would look so pretty, I had to do something else for the bottom of the birdhouse. So as you can see here, or here, here, I'm adding a bit of the trim to the bottom of the birdhouse as well. Next, I wanted to add some air dry clay trim. Using these small molds, and most of these molds are usually for fondant, I am going to create some, I guess some framing around each one of the little holes here for the birdhouse. And I think it came out really cute. Now to affix the air dry clay to the birdhouse itself, I would use either wood glue or E6000. In this case, I used wood glue from Dollar Tree and it worked just fine. Next, I'm going to use, and I'll be honest with you, it looks okay. It didn't work like I thought it would. I'm using this puffy paint, the t-shirt puffy paint that I got at the Dollar Tree to add some more detail to that birdhouse. And soon you'll see the final reveal. So this collaboration is with the lovely and talented Becky of Kind of Shabby. Her and I decided to collaborate together one-on-one -on -one to share our love for shabby chic springtime designs. She inspired me with her bird-inspired spring designs that came out last week. And so I wanted to share in that and show some ideas that I came up with for you here on my channel. So remember to check out her channel down in the link below. Thanks again, Becky. So taking a quick break from picture in picture, just to let you know that this was inspired by Teresa of Our Green Acres and Becky of Kind of Shabby. These are my shabby queens, my shabby chic queens that are not too shabby. So here I am, I'm bending a spoon and this is a spoon that I got from the Dollar Tree because it was easy to bend. And now I'm creating a little mini nest with some Spanish moss. And all I'm doing is just spinning around some, some of this moss just to make it come together into what looks like a nest. Um, I don't know, is this nest like? I'm assuming so. I didn't have a bird to ask their professional opinion about this. Next, I have this beautiful pearlized paint from Folk Art Paint, and it is pearlized. And I just love this robin blue color. I, I just had to use it. So here I am adding my little eggs and all these eggs are, as I mentioned before, or I don't know if I did mention before, but I made these with air dry clay. So if you don't have the right dimensions for your little Easter eggs, make your own out of air dry clay. It's easy enough and they paint beautifully and they dry and stay just perfect for any decor idea. Now I'm adding some, just to add some more nature to this, I'm adding some dried flowers and there's my final little spoon but wait there's more because what am I gonna do with the spoon I decided to make a spoon rest or a spoon uh, plaque 
and this is what I'm doing. Now, if you checked out the um, Thrift Flip Road Trip from last week, this is actually the drawer cover that I found on a drawer on the side of the road and I took it off and I said, hey, I'm going to use this for a future project and here it is. So all I'm doing here is decoupaging some paper. I have uh, book paper, uh, big pages, I, I guess you can say, and some scrapbook paper, which I thought would just match with all the colors that I'm using. Now, I've decoupaged everything with Mod Podge and here I am turning it on fire because it's me. Why not? Let's have an adventurous crafting day by setting things on fire. No, now children don't do this unsupervised. Parents, if you do this, moms, dads, if you do this, please make sure you got some water next to you. But this is the trick. When you Mod Podge something, it literally becomes a sealant. So not only did I Mod Podge the bottom, I also sealed the top with Mod Podge. So the fire is not gonna go any further than the area that's not Mod Podge. So you see the area that's Mod Podge is not catching fire at all. There I am showing, showing you the example. So it's a wonderful way to get rid of the edges that you have on any project, and especially if you wanna give it that aged look, because you will see the singed um, areas of the book pages and I think it's perfect for this kind of project. Here I am doing the same technique. This time however I'll show you the difference. I did not put Mod Podge on top of the paper as a sealant. As such then you're getting some burning on the paper itself. Lastly I'm just going to stamp with some stamps that I had here at home and it's stamping the word home because I thought it was just such a cute little plaque to put above that spoon and there you have it there's my little wall plaque and I think what I'm going to do now is add some hooks to the bottom of it oh and here I'm embellishing it with some more dried flowers and berries and I'm going to add some hooks to the bottom of this so that I can hang my keys when I come home from work and there you have it I hope you like this and I'll have a final reveal at the end So for my next craft, I'm just going to use these Dollar Tree Silver Trays. Now, I was lucky enough that I bought enough of these around Christmas time. I think I bought like five of them around Christmas time when it was still a dollar. Yes, I saved a dollar twenty-five doing that. Oh my gosh, I actually saved a dollar twenty-five by buying this ahead of time. I'm not complaining. It's still a good price. But if you do see these silver little trays, they're in, they have round ones and square ones and th this lovely design, please pick up as many as you can because they fly off the shelves probably because I'm buying them. <laughs> so what I'm using is that paint once again that I had gotten from Home Depot. Yes, these little mist tint paints sometimes are a dollar uh, even 50 cents. So that's a huge savings. All I had to do was paint the tray twice to make sure that it had good coverage. Next, I'm going to use this lovely graphic design that I found in Pixabay and I'm going to make it available to you in a link below. I love the idea of spring and birds. That's why I chose birdhouses for the first craft. But I do love uh, spring and birds in decorating and design. So all I'm going to do is decoupage this beautiful design onto my frame, which is actually this lovely silver platter now painted white. And it fits perfectly so if you want to use this design it's perfect to add it to this tray now I decided to add some moss on either side of the frame to kind of bring it to life there's nothing I love more than to have kind of a 3d design to anything that I have that's just a 2d design I don't know it just again for me it brings it to life so I found some flowers that were the exact same color as the flowers in this print I mean what are the chances again I'm trying not to do a lot of shopping I'm trying to be resourceful and use everything that I have already in my stash <laughs> and believe me it's a lot so here I am adding the flowers and I had both tones of flowers in the peach and this lovely peachy pink and it's like a darker pink or a hot pink and I just think it looks wonderful of course add some leaves and decorate it as you wish again you can pick any design that you want either on Pixabay or a graphics fairy is another wonderful place to find wonderful shabby chic cottagecore designs for spring 
So what I'm doing here is I'm using some of my gold paint from the Vlad family of products again. I know I love saying that, but I'm using some gold paint as a rub, a rub off. I know there's a particular product out there, but I, again, I don't want to buy anything. So I'm using my gold paint with paper towel and just buffing, rub and buff, I guess it's called rub and buff, and buffing off all the edges so you can really see those designs. And especially in the gold, it just gives it a little bit of, I don't know, similar touch as what I had done with the frame that's around the birdhouse. So it kind of pulls it all together. And lastly, just add a ribbon to the back and there you have it, a beautiful hanging decoration for spring. So first I started with one of these little houses from Dollar Tree. I don't know if you have any leftover. They were out last season. And again, I'm trying to use everything in my stash as much as I can, but I'm sure that they are either those little arrows that you can turn over and make them into houses or something similar at Hobby Lobby or any of the other places, or you can even make your own little house shape. So all I did for this was paint it first because I really didn't know what I was doing. I don't know why I did that, but I guess it was because the colors were so bright. I didn't want them to come through the paper and I wasn't sure if I was going to decoupage with tissue or with paper. Here I am using some scrapbook paper. I love this green and I love the stripes. So that's all I did was just decoupage or mod podge, mod podge the paper onto the little house. And now I'm going to add a little bit of moss. I'm going to tell you something about moss. I love moss. I don't know why, because it makes such a mess. I have a mossy mess all over my floor, but I still use it anyway. It just, to me, springs, 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 scream spring. Yes, it screams spring. Ah, spring. So that is why I use so much moss. Now I decided not only to have a birdhouse, but have a nest in front of a birdhouse. Does this make sense? I don't know. If you have a birdhouse, would you have a nest outside? And but it looks cute. That's why I decided to make a nest. And I really hadn't made a nest. Have I made it? No, I hadn't, I hadn't made a nest yet. I had a bird birdhouse. Don't have a bird cage. I love bird cages too. So after I decoupaged the paper into the house, I decided how cool if it had some printing on it. So that's what I did. I stamped some printing that I had these wonderful stamps that I found at Goodwill, believe it or not. There's a whole story about that in my videos i did a live haul and it was just a, a a boon a boon of stamps that i found at goodwill so here i am just stamping and i should buy a stamper should i not buy a stamper like an ink pad i should i just use my acrylic paint and again i'm trying not to buy things and a sponge to get the uh, acrylic paint onto the stamper and it works just fine at least for me i have not had a problem with it yet uh, the only time I have a little bit of a problem is when I'm stenciling. Sometimes the paint goes under the stencil, but that happens to all of us, so we'll get through it. So now I decided to add the little nest right there in front of what I thought was going to be a birdhouse, but you know, it is what it is. You won't have a birdhouse and a nest. I don't know, maybe they do. Who knows? Birds might have both. They might have a nest, you know, to hang out outside and then a little birdhouse when it's raining, if they're, the, if they're that lucky. So here I'm adding my little birdhouse, of course, with these tiny little Easter eggs that I happen to have on a garland, which I'm slowly taking apart to use the Easter eggs. Again, because I'm trying not to buy anything. Now here I'm adding some tiny little Easter eggs. If you don't have tiny little Easter eggs, you can make your own with some air dry clay. It's simple enough to do. You just make little, little Easter egg shapes and paint them and then speckle them with a toothbrush with some brown or beige paint looks just fine now after I did that I went outside like a crazy maniac eight o'clock at night scrounging around for branches this is what I'm creating this is eight o'clock at night one evening after work and I'm like literally outside of my front home looking for branches under my tree while people are walking their dogs and they're like did you lose something and i said yes my mind i have a youtube channel and i'm crafting all the time but no thank you it's okay i'm just looking for branches they're like branches like twigs i said yes twigs branches sticks whatever you call it but now you see why <laughs> now i'm propping this cute little bird right atop that branch and i just oh my gosh oh my gosh can we just, oh my gosh, I love this. I just love, again, I love doing like 3D, 2D kind of things. Oh my goodness. 
add some moss to cover like where the branches connect so it's not so like obvious like oh all of a sudden there's a branch that doesn't make any sense where this branch came from but oh, I just I this was like I don't know I think this was my favorite there's so many today and I really 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 love this one and just add some add some green leaves to the branches because I realized um there's brown leaves it's not fall Let's add some green leaves. So there you go, green leaves. And there you have it. There's my cute little birdhouse with my birdie. Oh, I love it. Now, take a look at this thing. I had gotten this in one of those $5 grab boxes from Michael's around four, it was $4 back then, like four or five years ago. And it's not bad, but I'm tired of it. This is what I have on my front, you know, door. That's why I don't change. This is, that's why I don't make, wreaths i'll tell you why i don't make wreaths i live in south florida any wreath you make is going to get totally faded worn down by the sun or by rain and it just gets ruined so most of my wreaths i use inside believe it or not if i make them you're usually inside so i tore apart everything on this wreath i kept the flowers i kept the leaves the greenery and i actually washed the greenery and the flowers and i'm going to use the greenery as i remake this wreath to fit my bird inspired decor now i did get those flowers right before i you know gave up shopping so just so you know i got those at walmart i think they were 398 and i just love the colors it's so perfect for spring so that is what i'm using here so to secure the little birdhouse bird nest thingy i guess we're going to call it that i used some burlap and just wrapped it around the wreath and then i glued the birdhouse to the burlap and not the wreath. Why? Because you know how I'm frugal and I'll probably take this apart and use it again. Although I'm very much in love with this design. But it's very likely that I might change it up for fall, for example. And that's why I chose the green because it can move from one season to the next. All I'm doing now is adding some greenery that I had just added around the house just to give a little bit more life. And I'm going to, again, add the greenery from the previous wreath so I'm making good use of that wreath as well. And those white flowers, I'm probably, if anything, maybe I'll even dye those flowers. Who knows? We'll think about it. So here I am just putting together all of the, you know, all of the flowers, all of the greenery to make this beautiful wreath. Now, I have to tell you, one of the hardest things I have when I create wreaths like that is, do I do a bow or do I not do a bow? It's really hard. I mean, that is the question, to bow or not to bow? That is the question, and especially when you have such a featured piece like that birdhouse, it's very hard to decide which one you're going to do. So you decide when you create your own as to a bow or not a bow and share it with me on Instagram at Indiana Jones one. I'd love to see what you come up with. Finishing off, I think it's really cool to add some berries as well as your flowers, just because it gives that more natural kind of feel to it. And again, there's a lot of little berries and little beady kind of flowers and stuff that Dollar Tree has. And these I actually got at Hobby Lobby and I got them for 90% off. So I think it was only a dollar for that little bunch, which it shouldn't be more than that, really. I can't believe that it was originally $9.99. But hey, I was lucky enough to find it on sale. And I did add it to the little bird's beak so that he would have some berries that he or she actually is a she because it's got eggs she is bringing back to her nest to enjoy.
So what did you think? Which one was your favorite? I know it's kind of hard to choose. I'm... Anyway, I want to thank you for stopping by and spending some time with me and I hope I've inspired you to create something like this. Please leave me a note below and let me know which one was your favorite and which one are you going to try out for yourself. Thanks again to Becky of Kind of Shabby and remember, stop by her channel as well. Let her know that I sent you, okay? And if you really enjoy this, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell and come back for more. As I always say, stay safe, be kind. God bless each and every one of you. And remember to live the adventure. I'll see you again soon. Bye.